Galatians 5, and it is, uh, we have the scripture marked 16 through 26. Yes. We're going to start in 10 seconds. 10 seconds, that's fantastic. Okay. I'm getting nervous. Hi, I'm Phil Kelly, and I have my good friend with me, Don Wong. Hello. And and we're filming this uh, two or three months before it's going to air. So right now, while we're while we're uh, making this live on tape, uh, we're in the first part of June, June second, and Don is going to leave the island this weekend. So I'm glad you have the opportunity, Don, to come and be with us today. Oh, wow, well, I'm welcome to be here. Don Thanks and I, for inviting me. Yeah, Don and I are real good friends. And what we're going to talk about today has to do with both of us. Because we're good friends and we're good close friends. And we go to two different churches. That's not a problem, right? <laughs> no, that's right. <laughs> it's good to have different opinions. Yeah. And, and still and, be one in the Lord. Yeah, we. I think we yes. have the same opinions. Yes. You know? And so Don is a retired rocket scientist and I'm a construction worker that's old but I still like to be a construction worker but hard to get people to hire me now that I'm so old. <laughs> well, I might be even older than uh, Phil. <laughs> yeah. You I just take a lot of supplements and I take a lot of things from my uh, skin. Yeah, so you, I think you look so younger than me. <laughs> yeah, you're young. <laughs> I hate to compare numbers though. <laughs> <laughs> so the good thing is the subject we, of our program it's factions, and okay. people, all of us have wondered, why did we have one church in the first century? We had the apostles started one church after the death and resurrection of Christ. Now, 2,000 years later, we have thousands of churches. We have mm -hmm. hundreds and hundreds of churches in each city, and, and uh, I believe these are factions. We're gonna go over a couple of scriptures. One is in Galatians 5, Another scripture is in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, and it says factions are serious sins. Mm -hmm. And it says in Galatians 5, uh, starting in verse 16, we're going to read that when we get to it. It says, people who live like this, it's a list of sins, will not inherit the kingdom of God. That, is, that means it's serious. Mm -hmm. Because the apostle Paul did inherit the kingdom of God. And he talked about some of his sins. He says, what, what, I, what I do is what I don't want to do. I, you know, he says, sometimes I do what I don't want to do. Mm -hmm. And what I want to do, I don't do. That's, that's, and he did inherit the kingdom of God, but he was falling short. Mm -hmm. So if you read in uh, 1 John chapter 5, I think we'll have time to get to that verse. It says, there are sins that do not lead to death. And that word death, you have to take note, it does actually in the Greek language, when they describe death, they use the word separate because the death is when your body and your spirit are separated. So that's why they use the word separate to describe death. So it should say all wrongdoing is sin, but there is sin that does not lead toward a separation from God. It's called falling short. Mm -hmm. and, and so there are sins that do not lead to death. But we're going to talk about factions as one of the serious sins. It says those who do these things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Yeah, because in Romans 3.23, he says, All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Right. But there are other sins where it's serious, more serious. That's exactly right. And, and so we're going to share that with you. And... And here we are as a prime example. We go to two different churches and we're good, close friends. Mm -hmm. And we're believers, we're one in the Lord. That's right. And we'll share that, you read that later in the prayer that Jesus prayed in uh, John chapter 17. He says he prays that the believers will all be one. 
And just because you're in a different congregation from somebody uh, doesn't mean that there's not uh, good Christian people in their congregation also. You know, I've, I've, uh, God has allowed me to travel to different places. Yeah. And one place where I checked out what exactly what you're saying was a small little church in Tanzania. I, was, I brought some wow. Pepto-Bismol to give to someone in Nairobi. Yeah. But I couldn't find the guy, you know, and I had all the instructions, but I couldn't find him. So I said, I've got to go give this away. I don't want to carry it back. Yeah. And I heard the missionaries like it to settle their stomach. Yeah. So what I did was I, uh, uh, I looked through yellow pages and I found a small church, Anglican church. And uh, so I said, I'll just go visit them. I went there early in the morning, took a taxi there, and he found the place. And I, I, I spoke with the Anglican pastor and, and a local pastor. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to compare our theology. What do they believe and what do I believe? And you know something? Just like you said, it's exactly the same. Yeah, the Holy Spirit teaches the same. <laughs> That's what convinced me, the Holy Spirit. There's got to be something common that teaches us all the same thing. Yeah. And it was the Holy Spirit. That's it. And then that's I brought it. over these, these pills, and he said, oh, that's great. I mean, this uh, Pepto-Bismol. And then I had some books, and I gave him the books of my pastor in that time. And the, the name was Ray Stedman, and he wrote a book. He says, I know, I read his books before. And I said, really? We're way over in California and you read his books? <laughs> he said, yes. And he mentioned body life. I said, yes, that's one of his books. Oh. But you know, it's amazing. You know, God will unify us if we just yeah. stay together and work over the little bumps, you know. Right, right. Uh, same thing has happened to me. Living in Hawaii since high school in 1963, and I did uh -huh. go to the mainland for 10 years for military and college, but uh, I came back in 73, and we have all kinds of people come to the island from all over the place. Oh, sure. We don't have to travel that much like you have traveled much. I have but, to travel, we don't. Yeah, <laughs> but we, my family and I, we didn't travel that much, but we met people from all over. And when I meet a true believer, I've met true believers from Africa and different places. Wow. And when they're really right with God, we are totally one. Because the Holy Spirit, it says, and there's a scripture in the Bible that says, I write this to you about those who are trying to lead you astray and deceive you. But as for you, Christ has poured out His Spirit on you, and the Spirit will teach you concerning all things, and what the Spirit teaches is true, not false. So when you really uh, repent, you know, you study the Bible, you seek God with all your heart, you seek the truth, you study the Bible, you you want God to teach you, you know that's what people want, right? If they're sincere. And, and they, it says, those who seek Him with all their heart will find Him. Yes. When they find Him, then they, naturally they want to repent completely so they can read the Bible and learn how to repent completely. Right, right. It tells you what to do, it tells you what not to do. Pretty simple. Right. And you just say, okay, God, help me do what you want me to do and help me not do the sins you don't want me to do. And then it says, okay, you, uh, what do we do? It, it says in Second uh, Acts chapter 2, after Peter's first sermon, it says they believed correctly because they were seeking God. And he says, what shall we do? All the people said, what shall we do? Mm -hmm. Because they believed him and they repented. And he said, what you do is you repent and you be baptized or immersed in water. And in the name of Jesus Christ, so your sins will be forgiven and you'll receive God's gift, the Holy Spirit. When you receive, and then it says, that's it. And then the promise is for you, your children, all who are far off and all whom the Lord our God will call. And, and the reason, I think one of the fundamental reasons that we do get along for those that are true believers and believe in the word is because somewhere in Romans 12, 1, it says spiritual service of worship and that is our our spiritual service to God mm -hmm. is that we we actually are slaves to his word and so that whenever he tells us to do something we do it and and uh, it's really important for us to seek his will and to follow it yeah and when we see the Bible and it tells us to do something we just do it yeah uh, and uh, so if there's any kind of a disagreement just look at the Bible and see what it says yeah and we follow 
And, and we both have the experience. We used to do what the devil wanted, trying to please ourselves. But it's better to have a master, which is Jesus Christ, our Lord, who loves us, instead of the devil. <laughs> so it's better to do what, <laughs> better to do what the Lord wants <laughs> then it is to do what the devil wants, then we get blessings instead of yeah, consequences. Right. Yeah, right. You know, the devil it, hates <laughs> us and the Lord loves us. Who do you want for your master? You get two choices. One who loves you or one who hates you. And, and it's nobody, your choice, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and then the, the devil hates us, but he does have one thing going for him. The first two or three times you do it, there is some pleasure in it. Yeah, short-lived. <laughs> short-lived. <laughs> the short consequences <laughs> come later. <laughs> <laughs> and most people, when they get the consequences, they can't forget. They kind of forget as to how they got into it. You know, so anyway, uh, you're right. I, I agree with you 100%. <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, another thing that's interesting is if you read the end of each one of the four Gospels, you'll see some uh, things right before Jesus ascended into heaven. And uh, we're going to get into one of those scriptures, I hope, today. Oh, good. Uh, it, uh, Right before he sent it into heaven, first he scolded them for their unbelief. I believe that's in the Gospel of Mark. Mm -hmm. And then he said he opened their minds so they can understand the scriptures. And so that's another thing. And after he'd been teaching them for three years, he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. And then after he ascended, they gave their first sermon at a big Jewish feast, the Passover feast, and there were thousands of people there. Out of the thousands of people who heard uh, Peter's first sermon, 3,000 of them were baptized mm. in one day. They believed it and they said, what must we do? And he said, repent and be baptized so you receive God's gift of the Holy Spirit and your sins will be forgiven. 3,000 people did that all in one day. After They just, praise, they praise just the did what he said. You know, No yeah. questions asked. They said, oh, that's all? Of course. <laughs> you know? Well, that's what makes uh, Christianity and following Jesus so easy. Mm -hmm. all, we d all we have to do is follow him. Yeah. He does something, we do the same thing. Yeah, we can see by his example. Yeah, and then, or also tell us what to do. That's yeah. another thing that's real easy to do. We mm -hmm. just go and say, this is what he said, and we do it. Yeah, we want God to speak to us. We can read the scripture, and that's how he speaks to us through scripture. Like you said, it, you know, we're, we are convinced that if we do those two simple things, follow Jesus and follow his word, good things will happen to us. We'll have sure. a good life Yeah. now. We'll also have a good life after death. Mm -hmm. And if we have trials and tribulations, uh, we, this makes us study the Bible more. And uh, we, we are forced to uh, study it and put it into practice because when we have trials and tribulations, we say, what's wrong? <laughs> And what can I do to make it better? And we pray more, too. Right. So there's, you have a choice. We, you know, you can sit there and fight it and, and get mad because he's, he's disciplining us. Or we can say, what did I do wrong? i got to fix this. Yeah. Otherwise, this pain is, is, is too much to bear sometimes. Sure. So, you know. We're glad he punishes those who he loves. If he loves yeah. us, we have consequences. And we say, okay, when we're old, you know what we say. We say... I know about the consequences of the wrong decisions. I don't want to do that again. That's, That's what right. we say when That's we're right. old. <laughs> because when you're old, you can't take pain as much as <laughs> you could have when you're younger. You and, know? and we don't want the same consequences <laughs> right. over and over. We tell the young people, right, hey, learn it the first time from the Bible and do it right the first time. It's better than having the consequences of, of uh, making the wrong choices. Because, you know, you've, you've heard the thing is experience is the best teacher. Not always. You know it's not good to jump off a tall building. That's experience. <laughs> no, no. Sometimes you can do it the easy way yeah. and learn not to jump off a building. <laughs> yeah, and you can learn by our mistakes, too. Yeah, we'll right. tell you. There Just you ask go. us. Yeah, right. We have a lot of mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I have some notes here. I'm going to get into some of these scriptures. Uh, we, we studied this before with some of my friends. So uh, I have some notes here. Factions can develop in a church group that can lead to serious divisions. And uh, there's a scripture uh, that uh, Paul said in 1 Corinthians 12. In verse 20, he said, I'm afraid that when I come, I may not find you as I want you to be, and you may not find me as you want me to be. 
I fear that there may be quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, factions, slander, gossip, arrogance, and disorder. These divisions can become fully mature and can cause a unified church to split into two ununified churches. Look, look at all the different churches on our island. Uh, we had one Christian church in each city in the first century, and now we have thousands of different denominations that may be called factions. So Paul, here's what Paul wrote to read this same uh, scripture in context. He wrote this in the second letter to the Corinthian church. And I'm going to read chapter 12, verse 14 through 21. This to get it in context, we got only 15 minutes left, so you know I'm not going to go too long. <laughs> but this is a, a, a little scripture. To get it in context, it's really nice. Starting in verse 14, Paul says, Now I'm ready to visit you for the third time. There's only one church in this whole entire city, but he's still got to help correct them because already in the first century they're starting to go astray. He's going to visit them for the third time and I will not be a burden to you because what I want not is not your possessions but you. I want you guys to compare this to the churches you see now today. He doesn't want to be a burden. He supports himself instead of uh, begging the congregation to give him money. So he does not want to be a burden to them. He says, after all, children should not have to save up for their parents, but parents for their children. So I will very gladly spend for you everything I and expend myself as well. If I love you more, will you love me less? Be that as it may, I have not been a burden to you, yet crafty fellow that I am, I caught you by trickery. Did I exploit you through any of the men I sent you? I urged Titus to go to you, and I sent our brother with him. Titus did not exploit you, did he? Did we not act in the same spirit and follow the same course? Have you been thinking all along that we have been defending ourselves to you? We have been speaking in the sight of God as those in Christ, and everything we do, dear friends, is for your strengthening. For I'm afraid that when I come, I may not find you as I want you to be, and you may not find me as you want me to be. I fear that there may be quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, factions, slander, gossip, arrogance, and disorder. I'm afraid that when I come again, my God will humble me before you, and I will be grieved over many who have sinned earlier and have not repented of the impurity, sexual sin, and debauchery in which they have indulged. Now, I'm going to read a little bit more. That only took, like, what, uh, one minute. Paul wrote also to the Galatian church in chapter 5. And we're going to start in verse 16. This tells you how serious factions are. It's one of those things that causes us separation from God. In Galatians chapter 5, verse 16, we're going to see two things in contrast. So I say, live by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. For the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the sinful nature. They are in conflict with each other, so that you do not do what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. The acts of the sinful nature are obvious, sexual immorality, impurity, and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. So you see, with all these bad, serious sins, factions is included. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. That's verse 21 of Galatians 5. Mm -hmm. We don't want to be doing things so, so that's going to cause us not to inherit the kingdom of God. That's serious. Verse 22, in contrast, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. 
Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the sinful nature with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking, and envying each other. Now that's just a little thing in context. Galatians 5, 16 through 26. If certain sins like those listed above are so serious that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God, then we should look at ourselves and those around us to see if we are participating with those in the process of creating and perpetuating factions. Uh, serious sins, uh, it's listed, here's another scripture in uh, 1 John chapter 5, starting in verse 16. If anyone sees his brother commit a sin that does not lead to death, he should pray to, and God will give him life. I refer to those whose sin does not lead to death. There is a sin that leads to death. I'm not saying that he should pray about that. All wrongdoing is sin, and there is sin that does not lead to death. We know that anyone born of God does not continue to sin. The one who was born of God keeps him safe, and the evil one cannot harm him. We know that we are children of God, and that the whole world is under the control of the evil one. We know also that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding so that we may know him who is true. And we are in him who is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. He is the true God and eternal life. That's just some facts. And then it says, Dear children, keep yourself from idols. Now, I just read that from 1 John chapter 5, verse 16 through 21. Now, we have only six minutes left and this is important. This is what Jesus wants. This is how Jesus prayed for the believers to be one. Now, Don, you and I are one in the Lord, right? Yes. yes. And you know why it's so easy? Because you're not a church leader and I'm not a church leader. It's harder for church leaders. For church members, it's easy to be one in the Lord. You know why? I have an opinion. I say... Don, I don't care what church you go to because I'm not getting any money out of the collection plate. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, if, and I believe you should go every moment where you think God wants you to go fellowship because you can share with people, you can teach people, and you have relationships with the people mm -hmm. that you, where you've, in the congregation where you fellowship. What we learn together, we can share with our people that we fellowship in our own congregation. That's right. And, and uh, my friend went, he took me to a church uh, Monday in Waikeli. Oh. And it's a group of people that are, it's a special group called Chemical Recovery Group for re people want to recover from alcoholism and drug using and all that. So, you know, they say, oh, how long have you guys been clean and sober? If you've been clean and sober, we're going to give you a coin. And... And so if you've been clean and sober for one year, we're going to give you a coin. So they gave me a coin. <laughs> and they said, oh, good. How long have you been clean and sober? I said, 45 years. <laughs> so they said, that was pretty good. I said, yeah, I just came because my friend invited me. <laughs> but the point is, you know what that preacher said? What? He's sitting there, and it's at night. It was just last Monday night in White Kelly. And he's a preacher. He has big church, you know, and he has different congregations all over the island. He said, if you guys aren't from our church, no problem. You go back to your church and you teach them what you learn here. Okay. That's what he said. He said, we don't want to take you away from your church. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have a church, you can come to church with us if you want to, yeah. if you're looking for a church. But if you have your own church, stay in your church and learn what you can here and go back and teach your people in your church. Mm -hmm. That's what he said. That was cool. That's good. Yeah, I like that. that's neat. So here's how Jesus prayed in verse 20, on uh, John chapter 17, verse 20. And Jesus praying to God, and we agree with Jesus in this prayer. This is what God wants for us. He wants for the believers to be one. And it's hard for church leaders sometimes because they have a tendency to say, oh, don't go to that church, go to my church, because we need more people and we need more money. <laughs> that's what they, you've heard that before, right? Oh, that's sad, but sometimes... Sometimes happens. that's what you hear. That's what I hear. It's harder for a preacher 
if a preacher does not go along with his denominational doctrine, he'll get fired from his job. Mm -hmm. And if he doesn't please the people in the congregation, they might not give money and he won't get money to get paid. Mm -hmm. And if he doesn't please God, he might not go to heaven. So he's in a tough spot. Oh yeah. It's easier for me and you because, you know, we don't have to worry about pleasing the denomination. If they kick us out, we'll just go to the next church down That's the road. Right. <laughs> <laughs> God can always find us a congregation to go to. <laughs> and we're not making money off That's the right. congregation. We don't make money. That's so, important. So thing. we don't care if we get fired from the congregation. <laughs> so anyway, here's what Jesus prayed. We got two minutes. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one, Father. Just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us, so that the world may know, the world may believe that you have sent me. I've given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me. May they be brought to complete unity to let the world know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. And that's from John chapter 17, verse 20 through 23. You should read the whole chapter 17 of the Gospel of John also. It's what Jesus is praying to God. This is a little, just a little tiny part of Jesus' prayer to whet your appetite. Remember that's in John chapter 17. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Donald and I are one in the Lord. All believers who are believers, no matter what congregation, if they're following Christ, if they're following Christ, we are brothers and sisters in Christ, period. And, and uh, we're united by Christ, by the Holy Spirit in us. But you know, I have to bring up something like uh, when I was in China and I was teaching in China. Yeah. And uh, these were like teaching for an hour and a half. Yeah. Standing there and teaching. No questions, just one and way. And you had a translator. Yes, we had a translator. And then uh, you get all tired up after an hour and a half. So we take a break for half an hour. So it takes me 10 minutes to go wash my face and things. And then for the 20 minutes left over, I actually listen to them sing. And they're singing songs. I don't know the tunes. I don't know the words. But you know something? It gave me strength. It revitalized me. I was oh, no longer nice. tired. That's amazing. And the reason is, they said, because they sang with a pure heart. The people singing had a pure heart. That's wonderful. I really have to say, I've been going to church a lot of years in America. That's never happened to me once in America. Wow. So there's something to learn from that. Yeah. Being a pure heart is really important. Amen. We're out of time, and okay. we're going to have another 28-minute uh, program, and you look in your TV guide, you'll see it. Thank you very much. Thank you. I had to kill. I can't hear it.